английском языке. Go. Go. <laughs> okay. Well, um, as you all know, I'll be uh, doing my lecture in English, uh, so I hope you can all understand. If I talk too fast, just uh, slow me down, just say something, and uh, I'll try to do my best and uh, speak as clear uh, as I can. Um, I'm very grateful to be here, nice city of Kharkiv. A uh, couple of years ago, I would never imagine to be here. But uh, I like it very much. I met uh, a lot of people, made a lot of friends. And uh, I hope I can make some more today. Um, <clears throat> so I hope you enjoy uh, your day, my presentation, and the ones from my colleagues. And I hope you all be joining uh, in the workshop uh, this afternoon. Let me briefly introduce myself and Tawaya. Uh, <coughs> Both are probably names you've never heard of before. So, uh, my name is Eric Hoekstra. Uh, I'm from Holland, the Netherlands. And uh, last year, I decided uh, uh, to found my second company. Uh, my first one was called Buckaroo, was in Holland, a big company in the field of uh, online payments. And uh, I sold that in 2012. And needed some new challenges uh, to take on and uh, I decided to build a search engine. Yes, uh, better than Google. <laughs> uh, and everybody said, you're crazy, why? Because <laughs> we have Google, you have Yandex and you have Bing and you have Yahoo. And I tell everybody, uh, but how much time do you spend when you're searching for anything? And, oh yeah, it takes forever, everybody's saying, and uh, we never get the results we want. And I say, how is that possible? Because I've heard that data on the internet is exploding in the last couple of years. So, with ever more data, how can it be that we don't get the results we search for? And uh, <clears throat> I went uh, uh, to the internet did some research myself, and uh, of course I have my experience with uh, the big G uh, and get frustrated uh, almost every day. So, um, it was a nice challenge. Uh, and I said this, you know, we must be able to do this better, we must be able to do this different. So, uh, but yeah, how are you going to beat Google is the next question. Well. As a matter of fact, I don't have to beat Google. If we can only serve, you know, like uh, a percentage of the population in this world, believe me, I think I, think I beat Google. Uh, and we made this a success. So, um, our mission is to change the world. And uh, what we have now, we have built in six months. And uh, it is online, you can go there, you can check, uh, but be careful, we still have limited results. Uh, our database is yet only uh, a couple of million documents, and one of the challenges we'll be talking about today is how to master this huge, huge amount of documents and information on the internet. Because Toweya, as opposite of uh, many of our competitors, and new ones uh, too, we have decided to do our own indexing of the information of the internet. So we send out and build our crawlers, our spiders, and collect the information about websites. And believe me, that's a challenge. Uh, but later on today, Galina, one of the uh, masterminds in our team, will tell you about our approach of how we deal with that. Um, so. I was invited here today uh, to talk about the challenges we face uh, being, uh, uh, one, a new search engine, uh, crazy as I am like a Dutch guy, and second, uh, in regard to big data, because this is the theme of, uh, of your uh, study, your course, uh, your winter study, as I understood. And believe me, uh, if you go and look, unfortunately still in our competitor sites, but you will find the internet is big data. I doubt if there's any database as distributed as it is that is larger than uh, the internet itself. But 
First of all, uh, let's introduce some about Toweya. Uh, I've made some screenshots. I didn't know if we have uh, like good internet here, but uh, if you want, you can uh, go out and try for yourself. Uh, and see, it's, it's more about seeing our approach, how to deal with things. And if you like, come back regularly because developments will be deployed in a fast sequence from now on. And our soft launch is planned early second quarter of this year. So this is uh, pretty damn fast. Um, entrance point looks familiar, I guess. It's all about uh, entering uh, keywords. Uh, we have to uh, take the hook where people are, uh, most people are used to. Uh, but we do lookups in our own index. You'll see a different approach as it comes to uh, presenting the results because this is where we um, put some more intelligence behind it I will come back to that later and where we group results in different result groups because some of you may be wanting to search for the latest information about a cer certain topic uh, another one may want to find the most popular and so we go on and on in different rankings and not a single page ranking like our uh, big brothers do. Uh, <clears throat> and on the right side and on the top bar, you will see some tools which will be uh, more intuitive into incremental searching. So you can enhance your search because one of the most frustrating things we meet in uh, search engine land uh, is that uh, once you did a search and you get the results, uh, you still wonder where are those 999,920 uh, uh, other results that Google says I have, you know? <laughs> uh, actually, a friend of mine did, some, uh, uh, did some, some testing on that, and he found out you never get further than 600 results. Yeah? Uh, it ends after 50 or 60 pages. <laughs> Even if Google says we have 2 million results. <laughs> Yeah, so, <clears throat> uh, but the question is, if you have like one million fitting results, it's like big data in itself. And uh, a typical user is not a big data analyst. So we have to present them with tools that will make refining the search easy. And <clears throat> these are currently being developed and are to be found in stuff like related keywords where you can go deeper into results step by step, uh, like uh, looking for synonyms, you know, sometimes a synonym can bring better results than using uh, the original world. And there are more, uh, uh, everybody who is a bit familiar with linguistics or semantics may know there are about 30 different relationships between words, like synonymy, polysemy, uh, homonymy, uh, <coughs> all about how to connect meanings and, uh, and concepts. Um, <coughs> we have uh, an intermediate view. Uh, this is pure for, uh, or, or mostly uh, to have a, click, a quick glance of the results. It will adapt to a different media type because one of the uh, aspects of big data is it comes in variety. Uh, <coughs> big amount of different formats of information. And so we give a, pre a quick preview before you can redirect to the, uh, uh, the final page. Um, okay, this is all nice. Uh, it, 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 you know, it looks pretty simple, but this is like the iceberg. Uh, you only see the tip of what's below the surface, of a, above the surface. Uh, below the surface will be the engine, and later my... Uh, uh, our mastermind, Yuri, uh, many of them, or some of them may know him. He was connected to Karas in uh, a long time. We'll tell you a little bit more about the heart of uh, this engine, which is below the surface. Um, don't know uh, if, if any of you already have a lot of knowledge about big data, but uh, the Gartner Group has defined a model back in the I think uh, early 2000s, uh, about the definition of big data. 
uh, and it's being refined ever since. But there are three or four, sometimes they use eight dimensions to define uh, a big data. And <coughs> the aspects of it are, uh, first of all, the volume. Um, there's a model called 3V or 4V, sometimes C6 or even found something like 16 Vs. Um, volume is, is, is the first one. It has to be big volume and uh, the internet is big. Uh, we'll get to that. Uh, found some nice research, but uh, the funny thing is actually nobody knows how big. Uh, there's only guesstimates and estimates of how many uh, data is on the internet and how many documents that represents. But the first requirement for uh, qualifying for big data is it has to be huge. The second uh, uh, dimension is velocity. Uh, velocity means you can have a, a, a big database, but you can also have a big influx or a big uh, change in the amount of data, the, uh, so the amount of streaming uh, before storing or maybe just streaming uh, has to be huge itself. And uh, this is uh, something that will uh, be, I think, one of the, uh, the bigger topics in the next uh, few years because uh, the number of connections uh, will be exploding. It's like now we have uh, around uh, four billion connections, of which uh, two and a half to three billion are by people, but uh, uh, everybody here will probably have a computer and a smartphone. Uh, and the next thing will be that your whole house is connected to, to the internet and your refrigerator, uh, your washing machine, your telephone, your security systems, uh, everything can be viewed. and. Uh, done on the internet and the internet is used as a backbone for streaming data. Um, <coughs> the third one is variety. Um, like I said, you have on the internet uh, and especially challenging for, uh, for search engines, you have a huge variety of data formats. Uh, anybody familiar with a little programming in, uh, in HTML or in, in websites? will have uh, found the content type attribute and this huge list of different content types there's out there. Um, this makes it uh, especially challenging for us to uh, analyze the typical sources, you know, because uh, there's video, there's audio, there's PDFs, there's uh, HTML, there's text files, there's so much out there. Uh, that needs to be analyzed and <coughs> needs to be uh, what we call harvested to put in our index. Because the index somehow has to uh, build up a uniform system uh, that you can compare different types of information with to look it up. Um, the fourth one was added by, to this model by IBM and it's about veracity. That means the truthfulness and the correctness of information. And <coughs> uh, a lot of information is uh, in this world uh, mutilated for different purposes. We'll come to that. Uh, but it's an important factor if you want to do uh, good analysis of data, regardless of being a search engine or if you want to do some uh, big data analysis on a huge database for pharmacy or test results, you have to know that the test results are good. That this information, the quality of this information is good. Because you can do all the analysis you want, if you put garbage in, you get garbage out. <coughs> Um, and the funny thing is, if you go out and look for big data itself, you will find that big data uh, being a topic, becoming big data already. Uh, 
There's, uh, everybody's talking about it. There's uh, like a, more than a billion search results if you look for it in Google. So if you want to find some specific characteristics, uh, you have to do and start with some data analysis to find it. So, the first challenge we face, uh, I call the huge volume. Uh, and uh, what we want to know is what are we dealing with. Um, there's much information. I hope you can still read it. I try to make as much uh, visual pictures uh, as I could to avoid having too complex and too much English text. So, uh, but numbers everybody can read, uh, I think. And it's a lot about, uh, about these numbers. Uh, but important is that we, uh, we're talking about so much data already uh, that they say it cannot be analyzed uh, anymore. That's a basic fact. Uh, we're talking not about uh, 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 petabytes anymore or zettabytes, but it's about exabytes. And these are like uh, a gigabyte, gigabyte, uh, 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 so a billion gigabytes. I cannot imagine how much that is, but uh, if you put it on hard disks, it will probably fill up the whole room here. Uh, and a lot of that is being uh, produced by companies. Um, uh, so that's for us uh, uh, an interesting uh, part because they have their data usually confined in, in secluded, secured clouds. Uh, but uh, a lot of them will need search engine technology to do analysis to find results within their own domain itself. Uh, and these domains grow so big uh, that uh, it, it almost levels like uh, a professional search engine technology to take care of that. And uh, a second, of course, is that uh, a lot of ever more people are producing ever more data, uh, uh, which is being available on the internet, being blogs, personal websites, being uh, like the, uh, uh, the messaging, the emails, uh, <coughs> and it's for us a challenge because, uh, as I said, it's too much to index anyway, and this will probably affect your results if you try to do proper matching and selection uh, in a bad way. Uh, so you have to narrow it down and make a strategy of what data do you want your search engine to present or to represent. Yeah. Some of the websites on the internet help us with that because, uh, whoa, <laughs> cold walls. Um, I hope it's all that's come down. That, uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, like uh, sites like t Facebook and Twitter uh, and other social media are even prohibiting a search engine to use the uh, crawlers to visit their sites. And you would need a huge amount of computer power to keep up with the amount of messaging that is uh, being produced there. Nice picture about the distribution of data across the world. And we still see that the most garbage is still produced in America. <laughs> Europe, uh, a good second place. And uh, the upcoming countries in Asia altogether uh, will probably soon uh, match what, uh, what we produce. So there's just to get a, 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 an interesting picture, um, it's an estimation about the unique URLs, because uh, this is one measure of counting how big is the internet. One is in bytes, of course, and the second one uh, could be in how many links are out there uh, and it's 
almost unimaginable uh, how much that uh, how many links there are. Uh, if you reckon that about uh, 20 years ago we only started with a couple of million, this was about the time uh, Google started. So uh, yeah, they had an easy start compared to us, <laughs> uh, <coughs> and it uh, rapidly grew uh, into one billion. And but it's currently really exploding. And some estimates are, yeah, this was 2008. There uh, were about one trillion. So that's a thousand billion, a million million links out there. Uh, this is not the same as web pages, and there's different estimations ab about how many pages this represents because uh, these count also the links to images, uh, CSS files, JavaScript, etc. And <coughs> there are some different estimates, but it doesn't really matter if it's 40 billion or 100 billion pages. It's so much. <laughs> anyway. Uh, but it depends on the ratios you handle, how many links are included in a single page. And some say it's around 40, some say it's around 25, and some estimates average uh, around uh, 10 links per page. So, uh, but 100 billion pages, and actually for a search engine it means 100 or 1 trillion links that has to be analyzed because, like I said, Internet is not about text only, it's about the variety. You also have the pictures. Uh, you have a lot of information that is hidden uh, in videos, in uh, audio files maybe. Uh, <coughs> and there are different techniques you can use to collect information about the topics, about keywords. You know, you can even do, for example, on audio files, uh, audio recognition. Um, the second is, uh, well, suppose we have indexed all these uh, one trillion links and uh, uh, we have stored that nicely in our index and you can search uh, on it, uh, but the next day this information will be old. So you have to find a way to keep up with the velocity in which data is produced. Yeah, and not every site will have uh, updates every minute, every day, or uh, maybe even every month. But uh, you have to uh, deal with the influx of new data about aging mechanisms, because uh, data from yesterday uh, may have lost relevance very, very fast uh, by new topics. You know, if something uh, something hits the news, something new breaks somewhere around the world, yeah, you will see this huge amount of uh, users shift and look for specific topics and forget about everything that happened uh, maybe even an hour ago. And <coughs> being a search engine, you want to be the one where they can find the latest news on uh, specific topics uh, and everything that happens in the world. And or you have a strategy where you can like uh, uh, share that with social media because social media will always be faster uh, in regard of this because you get a personal message that uh, 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 maybe uh, that something of interest is in your domain. But it's the uh, with respect to big data, it is uh, just amazing uh, to look at the numbers and to realize how, or to think about how you can provide solutions to meet this challenge. Um, that was an old picture. <laughs> yeah, uh, this one uh, even uh, shows some some more. Uh, but for example. Uh, there are more than 70 domains registered every minute, and there are more than 500 new websites created and launched every minute. Just that part alone uh, can uh, present a, a nice challenge for a search engine, because how will you find them? Uh, 
And like I said before, it's the, uh, the number of connections which will produce data uh, that will be just staggering in the next few years. And all these devices connected to the internet will uh, produce data that may be of relevance to some uh, users who want to look for that. The second or the third uh, challenge, uh, like I said, is the, uh, the different formats of information that's out there. Uh, it's uh, for me not a, a, as huge a challenge of as, as the, uh, the variety, uh, uh, the velocity and the volume, uh, <coughs> but still it is challenging uh, to find out how you can extract the right information from uh, different types of different formats uh, of, of documents. Uh, <coughs> because they're all stored in different files and have to have different techniques to extract uh, useful information. Um, and this is uh, because nothing really standardized or we have so many standards uh, that uh, you have to comply with and you have to adapt to. The fourth challenge is uh, it, 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 it's consisting of uh, a few topics, but it's about the, uh, uh, the quality of information that you find on the internet. And we even uh, in our team talk about the question, how can we de-Google the internet? Because right now we find that a lot of, uh, especially websites, are kind of uh, 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 mutilated or um, are biased by search engine optimization. And this, of course, is due to the fact that uh, Google is just a big money machine. And everybody knows that the results that are presented, uh, first of all, very clear in the, uh, in the advertisement columns or on the top, yeah, as uh, sponsored articles, uh, they are paid for. Uh, <coughs> The other rankings, uh, uh, they are determined on, first of all, the old algorithm that uh, is based on uh, links back to the sites. So uh, they, when they started Google, thought or had the, the conception that the more links a website has to itself from other sites, the more popular this site will be. Uh, this was a nice concept in the late 90s or the early 2000s when there were not so many websites. We only saw 26 million documents, so these relations could be counted easily. And uh, when uh, <coughs> it was nice for the first companies to start in. But imagine you're a, a, a nice little company selling uh, nice little products yeah, uh, th th there's no way you can compete with all the companies that have like 10, 20 years of experience with all creating backlinks and this huge network. Uh, they have an advantage that you cannot uh, uh, compete with uh, right now. Uh, so it is almost impossible to get between them. And the second one is that uh, people abuse this mechanism. It's called black hat search engine optimization. Uh, this has, it's, it's a gray area with uh, extremes. So you have uh, uh, the black, the real black hatters will create websites just to get high rankings in search engines. And Google being the most popular, they aim for that. Uh, so they can attract users and uh, they put in uh, information in the website that uh, is totally uh, untrue or, uh, but just put in there for search engine optimization. 
So talking about veracity, the real black hatters are the ones that uh, ruin the integrity of uh, the big data. Uh, and there are so many techniques for that uh, they apply, um, but it's a, a, a it's a challenge to find them, to locate them, and to filter them out if you want to present good search results. And of course, uh, as opposed to the, the white hatters who want to do a, a proper job by giving uh, in integrity in their information, uh, they should be rewarded uh, to get higher rankings by that. So you have to do something to mitigate this, uh, this issue. And it gets even worse because we don't only have black hatters who just abuse data to get higher rankings, but you also have very malicious content on websites. Uh, estimates are th uh, that there are over 1.3 million websites uh, and that's a huge number uh, that host malware. So their only uh, objective is to lure and attract users uh, which click on some stuff on their website and uh, to install malware on their computer to become part of these uh, botnets that hackers use and uh, do malicious things with that. So this is a, a pretty large amount or a, a substantial uh, amount of content that has to be uh, filtered out uh, from uh, good search results. The seventh challenge is that uh, it, it, but it has a little bit more to do with, with uh, ranking and selecting the search results, but everybody may have heard of the, the filter bubble. Uh, it's a huge discussion uh, about how to extract information uh, that the user wants as opposed to uh, um, presenting him information uh, that you think this user wants. And, uh, Google is known to give different search results to different persons, so everybody here would get search results based on uh, their user tracking history, uh, the websites you visited before, and uh, even using the same uh, keywords. And the question is, is uh, bubble f uh, filter bubbling, is that bad or is that good? Um, my belief is that it is not bad as long as the user wants it to assist in finding better results. Uh, because like I said, a user is not equipped or able to do big data analysis on one million search results. So there must be some mechanism to guide the user to the concepts or the uh, the information that he's really looking for. And these techniques uh, may limit the information that you present, yeah, but can be used in a good sense. The bad thing about filter bubbling is when it is influenced by commercial objectives again. And <coughs> this is actually, of course, the case in uh, the Big G environment where you get uh, all information which is uh, directed by the ones who pay the most for it. And of course, same happens in, in social media and uh, other platforms where you can find large amounts of information. So you can ask yourself or you can ask me the question, all nice, uh, Eric, but uh, why is this all important? And why uh, is, you know, these, these challenges of, of big data, why should we think about them? Um, well, answer is pretty simple, but we all need information to make decisions. Uh, and to make good decisions, we need good information. Yeah, uh, as Entrepreneur, I need information to run my business. I need to know, you know, what P 
people want, what users want. I need my financial information to make decisions. But if you're uh, down with the flu, you want information about which medication would work best. So you go and search for s uh, similar experiences. Uh, students, yeah, you have to graduate. Uh, so you make decisions when writing your thesis and you need good information for that. Yeah, um, so yes, it is very important that we have accurate and relevant information. Because uh, we make decisions all our lives, all through the day. So the question is more like, how do we find accurate and how do we find relevant information? And for Tawaya, we say we need an intelligent approach. Like I said, being presented uh, with uh, uh, a couple of, even, even a thousand search results, or yeah, in, in worst cases, millions of search results, yeah, you would need tools to go deeper and find better information. And I bet everyone has had that experience with uh, the big search engines that you still think there must be more out there. And uh, there's a saying, because uh, it's, it's, it's nice contradictionary to the actual behavior. And uh, Google, or the big search engines, taught us how to search. And there's a saying now that there's no better place to hide a dead body than on the second page of Google. Because no one ever gets there. <laughs> and, uh, <coughs> And it's kind of true, because we are like uh, maybe focused or fixed on the first page, on the first results, uh, but we keep thinking there must be more out there. So why don't we go to the second page? I know, because uh, after the second result, it looks like garbage. And, but still there's, uh, yeah, we have one million search results fitting your, uh, fitting your request. So. A more intelligent approach uh, would, I think, help us to uh, go deeper and, and narrower, but it has to be uh, intuitive, it has to be made easy. Um, so, I will present you some of the ideas that we are working on for Toweya. Some of them are uh, implemented in the background already, some of them are being worked on. Like I said, we're only six months down the road. And we still have a couple of months before the soft launch, uh, <coughs> but it's interesting and uh, I hope you can all later join us or if you want to uh, in these discussions uh, about these puzzles and how to meet these challenges. So, first of all, like I said, we need to filter out the garbage, yeah? uh, anything that is not uh, 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 um, that, that is being biased and uh, uh, not good quality information should be left out the scope of uh, results anyway. Because the question is, uh, from these 100 billion pages, how many pages would a good search engine need anyway to find good results? 50%, 70%, maybe 10%? Yeah, I think if you have 10 million good pages, 10 billion, yeah, uh, and there's an average of uh, 200,000 keywords in uh, a single language, yeah, I think you still have uh, a good results. And the funny thing is, we only have 2 million documents in our database right now, but I found some shit that I like even better that I wouldn't have found on the big G. Yeah, uh, and it's about my hobbies uh, as barbecue, Freak uh, uh, found, found uh, some nice recipes for uh, chipotle hot barbecue sauce. So <laughs> that's one of the main uh, testing keywords we use right now. Um, one of the first things is that uh, many of the analytics and the methodology for analyzing big data is still based on principles from the 80s and 90s. 
Uh, anyone familiar with these terms will remember, uh, will uh, know the term bag of words. You know, uh, a document being comprised of sentences, being comprised of words, uh, cut up in pieces, and you have this bag of words. And you can do uh, analytics of that. But uh, that was a good concept when we didn't have HTML markup, when we didn't have this variety of, uh, of formats uh, which have been developed since then. So what we want is to go more to the Internet of Things. And this is not uh, the IoT as being found on, uh, 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 of, of connecting all the devices. No, this is about recognizing concepts, recognizing meaning and things on the Internet. Because why can I recognize this is a recipe at once and my computer cannot? Why do I see this house is for sale? If I want to buy and go out, uh, look for a new place to live, relocate, or uh, and I w I'm searching for a house, you know, why is uh, 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 my search engine not transforming into this database of uh, uh, objects for sale, for real estate? Uh, <coughs> why do I? Uh, 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 not see, you know, products as they are uh, being offered or uh, special offers uh, being presented and I can click on them right away and buy them. You know, why is my search engine still treating this as uh, uh, just text for searching? And the same with, you know, real products. Why uh, do I see these are shoes and uh, is the connection with my search engine uh, still based on, on, on text. Yeah, if you go to Google Shopping, it's a different game. Google Shopping is uh, actually the same information these merchants provide for text searching, but added in a different way so Google can analyze it as being product. So uh, if we restructure the data, yeah, or analyze the data and restructure it, we can do a whole lot more with that. And we can actually buy these shoes. And then a search engine could become the biggest shopping mall in the world. Yeah. Uh, right now, I don't know if, if you have them a lot here in Ukraine, but we have all these different websites for comparing different products, you know, comparing insurances, comparing uh, stuff you can buy. But they are all linked to databases yeah, from these merchants, yeah, and they're not based on, on search engines. So these merchants have to maintain double connections. Yeah, first of all, they want to be found in search engines. Second of all, they have to connect to these platforms. And they can only do that by presenting their data in uh, a different way. Uh, so I think a search engine needs to be intelligent enough to recognize yeah, the different concepts and the different meanings. So we go from words to recognizing concepts. Yeah, it's an abstract term, but I hope you get the point. Um, <coughs> and a lot of that is about object recognition. Um, some of you may have been, uh, uh, I don't know, working on this already in, in video technology. They use it a lot. Uh, in, in there are some, some libraries already out there for pictures that can recognize objects. Uh, and the same goes for uh, concepts if you look at web pages. You know, we, we should do the same thing, the same approach of object recognition in websites, in web pages. Um, the second or the third uh, 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 aspect that would make it much more intelligent and easy to use, and that's where also this filter bubble stuff comes back again, is to take user-related semantics. So, you know, if 
I'm looking for uh, a certain uh, concept uh, it, with the same keywords, uh, you know, as, uh, uh, as, 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 as another person may, uh, he may want to find different results. And <clears throat> I want my search engine to be intelligent and to assist me and know what I mean with my lingo, with my words. Uh, so yes, I don't mind this search engine following yeah, and, and, and using my history uh, for analysis purposes to refine my searches. Uh, this is not a uh, 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 filter bubbling. Yeah, this is about semantics. So this engine must know I love horses, you know, and not the, uh, the, the, the small, uh, 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 the small uh, Swarovski ones, but, uh, you know, the real life ones. And when I'm talking about a horse, I want a quarter horse and not uh, some old Belgian uh, pulling horse. Uh, so this will, if, if you do that properly, this will reduce search results already uh, by a huge number. If we just know what concept a user means with certain words. And um, another one is uh, uh, linguistic indexing. So make the search engines smart enough so it knows about uh, stuff like synonyms or polysemy, uh, different uh, relationships between words. Yeah, so that uh, if you're looking for uh, uh, some term, uh, it can automatically say, uh, but remember, we have this synonym and it contains uh, 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 a lot of information that may be of interest to you too. Uh, so, it can, uh, the, uh, this, this index becomes more intelligent if you uh, connect these words in their relationships. Um, and it may also be, uh, yeah, I'm looking for uh, word one, uh, uh, and I don't mean, <laughs> you know, the antonym of that. Uh, so it's, it's like negation instead of uh, uh, positive search. So I want not sauce, <laughs> yeah, or uh, I want barbecue sauce, not recipe. <laughs> Yeah, we can do this uh, uh, with, with booleans, uh, but then you have to become almost a programmer to uh, look for proper results. Um, and of course, it uh, uh, has a lot to do with the way you select uh, your results, the accuracy of information that is uh, requested, and the way you present them in ranking. Well, as we saw in the screenshot I took from Toweya, we have a different approach to that. Uh, we also have a different approach to selection, which uh, uh, I'm not going to tell you because that's our little secret. No, but it's, uh, it's, it's based on um, document clustering and uh, uh, about uh, the... Um, uh, the, 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 the distance between, you know, concepts, the distance between relationships. You can do a lot of mathematical uh, interesting things with that uh, and, uh, and, and use that in, in the narrowing down the, the bandwidth of your selection uh, uh, for results. And then ranking is just how, if you, if you have a, a, a small number of results, in what order are you going to present them? You know, and like we said, you can use different approaches. Like you show the latest first, someone may want uh, the most popular, yeah, and then you can define what is most popular. Right now we use mostly uh, outside information to rank that. So uh, stuff like Alexa ranking. Don't know if you heard about Alexa, but it's like an, a ranking mechanism internationally of websites based on uh, the traffic they generate. 
Yeah? Uh, he could use uh, uh, Google Analytics, but wouldn't feel good to use information from a competitor. Uh, all in all, what it comes down to is that uh, behind all these mechanisms is one approach, and it's called classification. And that's why we uh, organized this workshop. Yeah, uh, but how are you going to classify uh, information? And there are so many ways, so many methods you can use for that. But uh, if you classify it properly, uh, then it will make searching a whole lot easier. And you can classify it uh, to categories, you can classify it to concepts, you can classify it to keywords, you know, you can classify it and until forever. But it's basically all classification. And classification is always about probability, and this probability can be used for selection purposes. So that's the basic principle. Yeah, uh, you can say, I want you know, to narrow down to a certain probability that this document matches a certain concept. Uh, that's the, uh, the basic mechanism we use behind all the different uh, challenges uh, that, uh, that I presented. But that's classified. So don't tell anyone. Um, so my last topic is coming back to the volume and the velocity. Uh, because this was one of the mind breakers uh, uh, we had to face. Uh, how do you index one trillion URLs? Um, there are two ways. You can wait a thousand years. <laughs> yeah, it's easy to uh, uh, to count one trillion, let's say 500 uh, uh, days per year, and you do uh, one URL per second. If you want to do a big analysis, it'll take some time. You have some delay in retrieving the information, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, but at the rate of 100,000 per day, uh, you would need about 20,000 years. Uh, I don't live that long, unfortunately, so uh, I either needed some magic or uh, come up with another idea. And we did, but we need your help and of a whole lot of people. So um, it's called distributed harvesting. We built an application and uh, Halina uh, will tell you more about it. Uh, and it's a small program you can download and uh, anyone can do and uh, help us harvesting uh, the information we put in the index. Uh, so Join the workshop, find out about classification, and please join our Harvester program. Thank you. <laughs> yes, questions? Sorry. I'm not used to being a teacher, so, oh, and I'm not. So what's the question? <laughs> well, the, the question is, is it, uh, if the bubble is big enough, would it be bad to be in it? 
And uh, what would make the bubble bad? Because uh, there will always be a limit, you know, about the information you can handle, you can absorb. Yeah, I think uh, if you if you find out your you have a million search results, uh, you can only read about ten of them. Yeah, maybe more. It will take some time. So the question is. Uh, which 10 out of these 1 million search results uh, must be presented to you? Do you want? So the bubble will still be there. But the question is, do you have a choice? And Or is this bubble biased by commercial information, by commercial objectives? So as long as I live in a bubble that is not influenced by commercial objectives yeah, and I'm allowed and able, I have tools to find even, you know, the small uh, jewels within this million search results. I don't mind if you call that a bubble. So, well, but a lot of things that I found yes. It was not intended. I yes. just Google something and Google gave me a lot of garbage, but... In the, the gar garbage you found the good things. <laughs> yes, that's, that's why uh, if I go back to one of the approaches about... Uh, oh. No, one of the... One of the different approaches we use in, uh, in TOEA will be to do, for example, select a random uh, uh, selection of... No, it's on my computer. It's somehow... No, uh, I can get back in presentation mode. Don't know why. Maybe connection. No. Um, no, but it's... So... Yes, we want to present those tools uh, that you don't find these, these small precious documents by accident, but on purpose. Yeah? We want you to find the things you are looking for, and not by coincidence, but because we know we're, they are out there. That's the difference. I think uh, most of people just uh, put, uh, just click the first link in Google. Personally, I do most of the time this. And uh, <coughs> only maybe some intelligent people, only some percent of people uh, really do deep research and find the uh, second and third page in Google. <laughs> uh, what, uh, what kind of users you aim your search engine? What are groups of people who will use and get uh, something useful from your search um, engine? I think, I think the, uh, the target will be, uh, uh, let me think, uh, to uh, leave those intelligent users with Google and get the rest. So you didn't no, it's, uh, no, no, no. It's, um, um, I know some people will stick to Google all their, all their life because it's so nice to click on the first result and even if it's not what I want, yeah, I use that one. Uh, that's okay. Uh, I think we, we will be uh, aiming at the more critical user who wants to do deeper search, you know, to do incremental search because uh, uh, it's, it's like uh, one or two billion uh, people use Google every day. And um, we don't need all of them. It would be nice, but uh, uh, I think I think maybe even uh, uh, if, if if we can get ten percent of them, you know, uh, I think we, we we will be successful. So you don't concentrate, for example, on people from universities <laughs> or from uh, markets. No, but I, I, I think, I think uh, uh, in the end, it, it you know, probably show that uh, more intelligent people will use the way. At the beginning. At the beginning. 
uh, no, the, you cannot really target at the beginning. It will be, uh, this, this will separate out by, uh, uh, just, just by some will like it, some will not. Toweya, yeah. good question. Toweya is, uh, uh, <coughs> is an old uh, Indian, Lakota, Native American word for scout, a pathfinder. And that's why we uh, uh, say it's about finding your way through this information. Yeah, and let Toweya be your scout. Okay. Question, like, uh, about the owl? What, what? <laughs> about the owl? No? Okay. No, no, no. Uh, uh, like, you know, in Google, when you look at the main results, the wall of all gets multiplicated, so it gets like Google. So what, uh, what, uh, what letter would be multiplicated in the way if you got many uh, results? Um, I think you better talk to my PR lady there for that. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's, it's open for suggestions. It's open for suggestions. I know there's no spice of Google. My question is about um, would you come together with Google or only about the law? And uh, if uh, your answer is the same, uh, don't you share about that Google takes your idea? Okay. Well, okay. First, uh, it's it's a uh, it's a good question. Uh, it's about the long-term strategy of Toweya Company, uh, and we don't have uh, any big investors right now that can uh, influence the strategy of our company. So uh, that's a good thing for me. And uh, the, it's, it's, it's a question, maybe we can open a discussion forum for that itself, because uh, right now, like we see, the internet is exploding. There's so much information. And uh, the question would be, do people have a right to an independent object index? Uh, because there is no index, it's like walking into the biggest library in the world, and you probably have big libraries here in university, but this one is like a zillion times bigger, and having no one to tell you where to find the right books. Yeah. Uh, so <clears throat> I know there's a, uh, there is a demand for uh, 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 an independent uh, objective search engine, uh, not biased by you know the big. Uh, numbers in, in commerce. Uh, on the other side, uh, it will cost money to maintain the infrastructure to keep up development, and it's not all charity. Uh, that's not possible. Uh, so there's still debate on how, what business model we will put underneath. Uh, right now, my intention is uh, to keep it independent as long as I can. Maybe uh, ask for, uh, uh, you know, like Wikipedia uh, model, uh, have, have people donate or support us financially uh, in order to be able to do that. Uh, will Google uh, uh, take our ideas? Um, we're working on uh, having these ideas in detail registered for patents. So uh, uh, the only thing that, and I'm not scared, uh, the only thing that would be nasty is this huge department of lawyers uh, with Google uh, that would go uh, a, a long way, you know, to, uh, to, to hurt a small company. But if they would do that, it would mean for us a lot of publicity 
and like Goliath and David, and we'll see what happens. Thank you. So, thank you.